Hello guys, today we are back looking at the Scania R730. What we're going to take a look at today is the front axle. Trying to turn it into a driven and steering axle is going to be pretty tricky. So we'll start the first stage of that. But before we do that, just a quick shout out to our sponsors, which as you can see for this build is PCBWay.com. PCBWay are experts in the fabrication and assembly of printed circuit boards. Whether your design is a simple single sided board with true hole components to a multi level board anything up to 40 layers they can manufacture it. And if you do an SMD design you can also get the stencil created so you can use solder paste to assemble it. So if you're looking to get your design manufactured I'd highly recommend you check out PCBWay.com. So if we take a look at the front axle here you can see that all we have is one solid axle there's no steering on this uh, welly model here we have two screws here that are holding on this sort of uh, undercarriage and that's all there is to it so maybe we'll be able to mount our design to those two screws but i think we're going to need more space than that to get our motors uh, located and also to give enough room for the model actually to turn so it's just those two screws holding that on we have these very thin little tires i don't think they're really going to suit the look that we're going for we've wider tires added to the back well, slightly wider so we're definitely going to replace those tires and if we look at where the tire is situated here so you can see that the tire is very close to this mud flap and it's the same story at the front so if you imagine if we were trying to turn those tires you're going to be pivoting back here somewhere so you know you need a little bit of room for that to go forward and back there so i would expect that this mud flap is going to have to go probably a big chunk out of this front one as well so that we can get the steer and especially for uh, adding a motor in there as well we have to leave space for the motor to twist on the opposite side of the pivot point so quite a bit to do to replace these tires that are on this uh, little wheel here I was thinking to use a set of the tires that come on the Scania CQ uh, models so it's nearly twice the width there so I think it's a little bit better uh, scale wise it'll just look a little bit better and they're a very nice soft rubber tire so you're going to get plenty of grip from that so you can see there it's not a hard rubber at all so if we're driving a wheel with this we should get plenty of grip so last night I designed up a few parts to 3D print so that we could uh, get our driven motors on the front of this truck. The first thing we obviously needed was a wheel, pretty much the same design as the one that was on it, except that obviously it's wider to take the CQ tyre. On the side that's going to mount to the axle, I have the 3mm D-shaft in the centre there. and. On this side I 3D printed a hole so that I could fit a brass insert. The brass insert just looks like this. It's just a little piece that I can glue in. And normally you would um, you would mould that into something like if you were uh, injection moulding or rotor moulding or something. A little thing like that would be moulded into the plastic. But for my case I just glued it in. Now uh, th there's quite a lot of glue on this because um, I probably put too much stuff on the print bed last night and some of the layers come out a little bit sketchy so one thing I'd say if you were trying to 3D print wheels like this normally you want to try and print things at an angle because it will leave less surface area on the print bed but for uh, wheels I think if you if you print them flat with the axle shaft part down I think you end up with a straighter axle shaft because um, some of the other wheels that I printed at an angle uh, even the ones on the back of this truck you could see the wave slightly as they rotate so I'm going to try this one out this was printed like that on the print bed and hopefully it'll be a little bit straighter but to mount it to the D shaft it, obviously it just uh, slides in there no problem and we have glued in a little brass piece and then to secure it, I have a tiny little M2 grub screw here. It's going to be hard to get that to focus on the camera. But we have that tiny little grub screw. And we can just screw that in the side into our brass insert here. Get the D-shaft on our motor. And we can 
we'll just tighten this up. We don't need to go crazy with the tightness. And I'll just hold it in place. So to actually mount the motors on the truck, I have this little bracket here. I'm going to have uh, just a mirror image printed for the other side. The, my print that I did last night didn't work out so good, so the, the other one didn't come out great. But basically, that's just going to hold the motor with the two... There's two threaded holes here in your N20 motors. Um, they're smaller than M2, maybe M1 or M1.5, something like that. So, just going to make those two holes. I've added this piece at the back so that it strengthens the whole thing up a little bit rather than just having this half of it. So, put them two screws in there, that has the motor mounted in place. And then, to pivot it, I have two M2 lock nuts as close to the tyre basically as I can go without getting too close. So, we're going to be pivoting from this point here. So, you can see there's be a bit of swing on the tyre and um, forward and back so that's why we need to get rid of the mud guards so at the minute I just have those two M2 lock nuts uh, just pushed in there so just kind of a press fit at the minute but I think I'll reprint this part and if uh, I'm happy enough with the second print I'll just glue those two lock nuts in top and bottom so I'll just assemble what I have here so you can get an idea of how it's all going to work so if we put the motor on first, get our screws. It's hard enough to get this one in the far side, so just use the tweezers. So that looks to be nice and flat in there. We're going to need to spin the motor around so that we can get the grub screw in here. So I'll just get power for that. There we go, the flat side of the D-shaft is facing out and now we can get our grub screw just tightened up to that flat face. So the next thing to do then, I have just printed up two of these temporary uh, little brackets that I'm just going to simulate the width of the axle. So I went for 45mm between these two points and hopefully that will be enough. This, this is just a simple little bracket to kind of test it out more than anything else. So, all I need to do is screw that with M2 bolts here. Screw that into our lock nuts. So we'll just screw it tight and then loosen it back a wee bit is probably the best way to make sure you don't go too tight on that. Because if you leave it too tight then obviously your servo motor is going to have to fight that and it's already going to have enough trouble fighting it just by the weight of the vehicle that's on it so you don't want to make things harder than you have to. So let's tighten down, just loosen off a little. So that's pretty good. You can see I got the gap wrong on these, so that should have actually been a little bit higher. But it doesn't really matter, it's only for a test. It's only really to give us an idea. So, you can see now that as we move our wheel, you can watch the edge here. So it moves in quite a big arc. And really, we'd like to be able to turn like this, but it might not be possible like to be able to turn as sharply as you possibly can when you're building a model for yourself you know, trying to make it as good as you can but it might not be physically possible because if you watch the back of the motor here it kicks out a lot and if you watch this side it kicks out a lot so we'd have to have our servo arm coming out and around to get around this point and we need to cut a long way into the mud yard to get the motor to spin there Maybe that's not that crazy of an idea, actually. If we look at the bottom of our truck here. Where we're at, 
uh, our wheel is pretty much going to be sitting at this level here so we'd need to lose the mud flap at this point and lose it from this point so you're nearly just cutting this straight down here and straight down the front here to give enough space for the tire to come in and when we're moving out if we were turning that which would be a ridiculous sort of turning angle really but the motor would be coming up to that space too so it's not so bad at the front with the motor but at the back there definitely we need to lose this bit of a mud flap so that we can accommodate the motor the other thing is that this existing framework uh, it's going to have to go because it will be in the way of the motors so we're going to have to 3d print something that probably comes down and around to leave space for the motors to move properly in the middle of this so that'll mean taking all that apart it might not be that difficult let's have a look and see what's actually holding everything together here this might let the cab off in a single piece if we take these two screws out and then maybe we can get away with just modifying this frame now the these side pieces here they are hot melted in here so the next piece that we could take out looks to be the interior of the cab which is going to come out from here Okay, well we have the two screws out of it, but it's not wanting to come apart too easy. Well, it looks to be a case that we can't really go any further without breaking the melt kind of joint here. So let's just do that. We can always glue it in. It's kind of inevitable that at some stage we'd have to uh, break a few pieces although actually we're going to cut this section out of here anyway so we were going to have to replace this at some stage because this was just going to be in the way of the tire so there's no point uh, keeping this so those two melted joints there they were just holding the rear of the, the tractor unit on there so we can leave that piece to one side there and now we can take a closer look at the front which is still in one piece here we need to get it apart which is probably going to mean breaking another few of these plastic sort of joints just knowing where the joint to break is that's a clip maybe there we go So you can see here we have the two clips on the front that's what was holding the model together then we have our tractor unit here the cab lots of space in there you can easily hide your electronics under there if you need to do we have to get this front part off anyway but we'll not worry about that today we're going to need it off because we need access to the lights for now that's perfectly fine this part we can get in anywhere we want to there it's all die cast nice heavy sort of unit there so it's okay for what we need we're gonna have to remove this section here I would imagine for the tires and this piece at the back here we're probably gonna have to come up with a new mounted system that will be based on the frame piece that holds the wheels so our piece that holds the wheels is probably gonna be connected to these two points here and then that in turn will come back and this part will probably be gone out of here and we'll have to add a new structure in to the back here so that we can secure it nice and firmly to the rear of the model because as we stand the current system is just not going to it's just not going to work for us we're also going to need to mount a steering servo in here somewhere so we'll have to account for that as well just to give you a rough idea that's kind of where our our wheel needs to be and you can see it hits the rear mud flap there and hits the front mud flap in there so 
we might be able to keep this sort of uh, lower skirt here because I think the wheel might just clear that the back of this part definitely has to go because the motor's hitting it the wheel's hitting it so that's a problem there but on the front the motor's not going to hit this the only part that's going to hit is this front curve of the wheel so it might only be it might only be this section in, in here that we need to remove not this lower piece that would be the ideal scenario if we could just cut this we'll say just cut it nice and straight here same on the other side and take this one section out of our way that would be the ideal scenario I think so a little bit of work there to do now that we're down this low we should be able to mount our frame in I mean that's it sitting on the mounting points and the tire is too high it's hitting the top here so we clearly have the space here now to design our frame around this section if we mount our frame with the motors to the back here that means that we have all this space in the front here to add our steering circle so so far everything is looking to be working out pretty perfectly for us so it's looking good so far but an awful lot of work to do yet what I'm going to do now is go off and try and design the little bit of frame that's gonna mount in here and connect to the back so in the next video we should be cutting off this piece of a frame we'll have all the 3d printed parts and we should be able to mount all those pieces in and just see how it drives we should be able to test all six motors I think so that should be pretty exciting so make sure you're subscribed and uh, get the bell on so you get the notifications and a big thank you to PCBWay who are sponsoring this build it looks like I have a lot of work to do designing all these parts to put this all together so I better get started on that and that's it for this video so thanks very much for watching